This morning, I'm going to mix it up just a little bit and throw both the second lesson, our epistle lesson, and the gospel lesson together this morning. But the main verse is from Paul, as you see up behind me here, where he says to us and to the Romans, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul's out on his third missionary journey. He wasn't dealing with snowflakes like we are right now because it was spring. Good old 1557, a good year to remember, right? Planning to return to Jerusalem, bring the offering to the poor. Probably writing this all from Corinth. Uh, And he sends it over to the church of Rome, predominantly Gentiles. He wanted to remind them of the gospel, of the good news that they were all taught by him and a couple other apostles. He wanted to remind them about the sinfulness of man, God's righteousness, and most importantly, how they were justified. And that was by their faith in Jesus Christ. And in that, we get to our chapter 5, which our verse is from, in which the epistle lesson was read from. Paul shows us the fruits of righteousness, our life in justification. Remember, there's sanctification. We're sanctified as Christians. But how do we get there? We're justified, not by what we do, but by what Christ has done for us. And there's fruits in living that faith. According to Paul, there's peace with God. At first, when I first read it, I was thinking, well, there's, you know, that that the peace which surpasses all human understanding, which keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah, you young kids probably don't remember that one, that line, but us old folks do. Um, but, But it is a peace that we have with our Heavenly Father. And it's something this world can't give us. We have the grace of God in which we stand in. And thanks be to God for that grace because it covers a lot of our sins, covers a lot of our lives. And Paul tells us we can rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. But he says more than that. Not only can we rejoice in the hope, Paul understands life, okay? Because he says... Not only that we can rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts and through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, sometimes it sounds like a downer, but it really isn't. He's trying to tell us, look, in all of life, God is still with us. Those fruits of righteousness are still there with us. But then he gives us the why we rejoice, even when things seem to be down a little. Uh, There is an old song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And I think that was Paul's theme song, you know, Don't Worry, Be Happy. He had God, he had Jesus Christ, he knew That in all that was going on, Jesus had it in control. Jesus died for the ungodly. Guess what? That's us. That's why we don't have to worry and we can be happy. God the Father gave his only son. And our verse, verse 8 But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hmm. While we were still sinners. You guys aren't sinners, are you? This is why I breathed in our gospel lesson. The woman at the well... Here's a Renaissance painting. This painting is from a Nicholas, and I'm going to kill his last name, Posin. It's funny, we're talking about sin, and his last name ends with sin. We all know the story of the lady at the well, correct? 
Um, so many things that day that went against social mores, that went against everything they all grew up with and understood. And yet Jesus seemed to know her way better than she could have ever imagined. First off, one, a Jew would not talk to a Samaritan, nor, nor would a man, a Jewish man, even think of talking to a Samaritan woman. So already there's boundaries broken there. And Jesus offers, even then, to what the Jewish people would say, really terrible people, <laughs> living water, his living water. The living water that would give her not just life here, but life in the hereafter. Jesus offers her the living waters of faith in Messiah. He gives her the gospel, even though he knows all of her sins. Kind of rattles them off for her, too. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but, okay, I haven't had four husbands yet. <laughs> I'm not planning on it. Certainly not as bad as her. Well, I think she was having one of those days. And I, I was trying to find, you know, I googled one of those days, and this is what came up, and I couldn't resist. Because I think we all have one of those days, and I really think this is what she started to think when Jesus started rallying off what her life was all about. You know, the voices in my head are fighting. My imaginary friend is running with scissors, and at one point, one of my personalities wanders off. Yeah. We all have days like that. We struggle with our humanity. We struggle with the world, with sin and Satan. You know, today it's very hard to stand up and say, we're Christian. I'm proud of you guys touring and saying, look, we're Christian. And we can sing about it. What an awesome thing. It's hard to stand up for life nowadays. You know? The things we daily struggle with, especially after COVID. Right now, our youth are going through more mental illness than ever before. And I think the adults are too. We're all struggling. Mental illness, depression. We all suffer in some way. Relationships, health, job, school, you name it. I could go on and on. But remember what Paul says about all of this. Even in this, we can rejoice. And why? Because we have the Holy Spirit, which shows to us our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember his words, but God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So here's what I want you to do this morning. Here's a more contemporary painting of the woman at the well. We know how Jesus knew the life of that Samaritan woman, knew her heart. And yet he spoke to her of the living water that was for all, Jew, Gentile, Samaritan, all of God's loving creation. So here's what I want you to do. Think of yourself standing at that well. What would Jesus say to you? Picture yourself there. What would he say about your life? Think about that one for a minute. I won't make you wait a whole minute, because a minute will seem like five minutes. It kind of gets you uncomfortable. I hope it does, at least. I'm not sure what he might say about your personal life, and personally, I don't want to know. We all have those moments. We all have those things we would just love to file and forget. As I say, put in the round file. In other words, throw in the garbage. 
But this I do know. He would say to me, to you, to all of us, both listening and hearing, to all of his creation, come. Come and drink from the well of living water. Come to me, ye who are weary and burdened and heavy laden. Come and I will give you rest. Jesus didn't just say those words, remember? He didn't just talk the talk, he walked the talk. And he walked it all the way to the cross. And there he became that perfect sacrifice for each of us. There, while we were still sinners, he died for us. So this morning, place yourself at the well and think about that. And then think about the awesome gift Jesus offers you and gives to you and you have through the power of the Holy Spirit that is bringing you to faith and growing you in faith. What an awesome gift that is. And then you know what our response could be and can be and should be? Another verse from St. Paul, as he says in Corinthians, from 1 Corinthians, we all should be able to say, thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. That's our response. Because truly we are thankful, and truly we have much to be thankful for because of that gift of Jesus Christ. So, what do the redeemed, what do the restored, what do the loved and forgiven children of God say? Amen. Yeah, maybe. What do the children of God say? Amen. Now we can say, Amen.